This is the A to Z Podcast. I'm Zach Jackson. He's Andre Knott. We're at A to Z Podcast.com at Facebook.com slash A to Z Podcast. We're at Akron Jackson at Dre Knott on most of your favorite social media platforms. If you're new here, thanks for coming. We're glad you finally got bored enough to tune into us. If you've been around, we thank you for all your support. And in addition to dozens, hundreds of you guys who have supported us for a long time now, uh, companies that always have are seen the Honeymoon Grill and American Fireworks. You guys did a wonderful job of damn near buying American Fireworks completely out of product about three weeks ago. They're restocked. They're, re- they're ready for you to come back. They're always open 24-7 at AmericanFireworks.com. Dre, we skipped last week on the podcast front. We both had things going on. And I think it was last Friday, you basically said, let's do a podcast What around this time. What do you think? And I said, well, I could shuffle a couple things around. I'm not sure what we got to talk about. But as we sit here early on a Monday afternoon, um, you're headed to a baseball stadium for an exhibition game, preseason game, whatever the hell they're called. And if all goes well, uh, four days from now, you're doing real baseball. So maybe sports are back. Yeah. I would say some soccer fans would say to you that sports are back already. Uh, and we can have that conversation for another day. Another you place. don't want emails from those but, people. Let me tell you that. I, <laughs> I, to be honest with you, I don't want emails from nobody at this point. So I, <laughs> I echo your, <laughs> I echo your sentiment uh, to those that have stuck with us, that have been with us, uh, whether you're just a listener or whether you guys have sponsored us and been with along for the ride. Uh, it is appreciated. And hopefully the ride gets a little bit better here going forward. So yeah, sports are officially back. I think we're two weeks away from the NBA trying to make their bubble work. We're four days away, three days away, really, from the uh, Yankees and, I think, Nationals uh, getting underway. We are are at that point that we've been circling and hoping for since way back in March. It's taken a little bit longer than all of us wanted, Um, but it's here. And and cautious is the word that I'll use. I'm I'm cautiously optimistic, but I, you know, I'm still worried, to be honest, uh, how this will work baseball-wise. Um, I think it's fine when you're at home, but I think the tra- I think 14 days, I think 14 days from Friday will tell us if we'll get 60 games because that's after every team will have traveled, gone home, and just to figure out how travel will go. Um, I mean, the Indians traveled this past weekend, Zach. It worked out. They went, they already drove to Pittsburgh. You and I have been on flights and on buses to Pittsburgh with Cleveland teams. I was not on this one, but thank God it wasn't because they ended up having a – it wasn't a tire issue, but basically one of the – one of the vans, buses that they took, because they took three for social distancing, um, the one that had Lindor and Zach Cleese, like the starting pitcher, ended up breaking down right before it got to Pittsburgh. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> in true Cleveland fashion. That's straight uh, out of Major nothing, League. <laughs> right, right. Nothing goes perfect. And, I mean, they have the right people for it. I, I'll give Cleese, Zach, I'll give Lindor credit. Um, they didn't make it out like a lot of people would have made it out. They just took it in stride. Um but I think that's kind of the rules for the Indians this year. Uh, Terry Francona has made it quite clear. Um, bitching and moaning is not going to get us very far. So um, get over yourself. Get over the moment and realize that this isn't going to be like anything else and everybody else is going through crap. So deal with it the best way you can or, or get out. Yeah. Um, and as we look at all the sports and where they are, where they're trying to get to, as you, I guess three days away for baseball is right. Uh NBA has exhibition games this week, right? And they're about 10 or so days away uh, from coming back. Um, um, football's okay. going over some things. I mean, that's what it's going to have to be. Uh, we, we've been saying for weeks and for months, you know, mature teams are going to win, right? You're going to have to yep. more than ever put the work and the focus um, in one place. And we will see there's so much unknown. And, and again, um, as we've been saying, where, no matter where you are on, on all of this, there was always going to be, for lack of a better word right now, an awkwardness to getting sports resumed, a lot of work, mm-hmm. a lot of complications. And we'll see. Um, why don't you tell everybody, including me, like I don't think you're going to be in the dugout and huh. interviewing guys right after the walk-off home run, right? So, mm-hmm. like, what is it going to no. be like come Friday for you? Um, figure, we're, I mean – Tonight we're gonna to go do some steps. Um, we have some cool, we got some cool stuff that we're gonna try if we can get on air. That's being funny, facetious, and true. Um, we, I mean, I will have a headset. I will be set up somewhere around the dugout. Will be my number one setup place. I will be somewhere around the dugout um, in the seats that fans usually sit in. We have headsets 
that will only be used once per game uh, that we will save for a post-game interview. So the post-game interview may not have me face-to-face with star player, but you'll see that player on the field. Maybe I'm 10, 15 feet away in the stands asking the same question as I would be usually. Hopefully they don't get water guns to spray me, but I've heard that they already start working on that. <laughs> um, that's, that's one of the ways that we will have. Uh, basically, not to give too much away, we've pretty much, and, and we're going to try this today, and we're going to try it on Friday and throughout the weekend. Um, we have three pairs of headsets for interviews. Uh, they're separate. They'll be cleaned every night. Be cleaned every day. Part of protocol. Only can be used once until they're clean. One will be for a walk-off win, like you just brought up. Another will hopefully be able to interview players that aren't in the game, that are sitting around the park like I am. Uh, that we'll be able to talk with. Tonight's game, we're going to actually do an interview with Terry Francona during the game where he'll put on the headsets. Um, I'll have a headset on. Matt and Rick obviously will have their headsets on. And for an inning, inning and a half, Tito, as the game's going on, is going to talk to us and be on part of the game. Um, when the oh, season wow. starts, we hope to have the same type of stuff with players uh, that aren't in the game, uh, that aren't, you know, that are sitting around the park in these different areas. Um, and I, another hope that I have that I'll give into is that I will have an RF camera. That's basically the camera guy. If you ever come to a game that walks around with the camera and he's usually with me, um, we're hoping that I'm just, as this gets going and everyone gets comfortable with, with everything that we're trying to do, um, I think I'm going to go around and sit in different seats in different areas in the park and have my camera guy with me. And you can get that visual of that part of the park or just, you know, or, or sight in the park. Um, we're going to try to make lemonade out with the lemons that we've been given. It will not be exactly the same as what you're used to. Um, there'll be some innings and some nights where I'll be doing interviews from up in the booth next door to Matt and Rick um, that you usually may see um, Jensen and Al Palowski in doing postgame or doing pregame. Uh, we're going to use all the elements. I may be in a suite sometimes. Um, we're going to try to use all the different elements of the baseball park that we can uh, to still be entertaining and still bring the gang to people. Right. Um, and I guess that tonight being a dry run is probably necessary for that, right? Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> yes, we need this big time. <laughs> okay, so I, I didn't see Saturday's game. I, I have seen some highlights, you know, pop up in various places. But, um, you know, I'm assuming you watched or there's – or probably been work discussion yeah. or both. Like how strange slash different is it presenting it in front of an empty stadium? I was very much, I will say this, you know, first thing he said to me after the game though, and I, I chuckled because it's obviously the one annoyance or the good thing for most people. He said he felt like the Pittsburgh people did a good job of playing noise, playing the sound effect, um, that it made it feel like, Zach, please tell me the same thing. It made it feel like a real game. Uh, because of when the noise came, the sounds that came in, the sounds that went out. We are going to do that. As, I think that's just what MLB wants. And uh, to be honest with you, I want it. I mean, it's weird. I heard it a little bit with the Yankees and Mets last night. But if you get the right volume of it, it does give you the regular feel of what a game is like. Uh, but it's still odd, uh, you know, whether we have to cut out, whether you put, uh, you know, I saw a bunch of signage. Uh, in the Yankee game last night where they put those huge signs. That, remember when Oakland couldn't sell out or, or like the Miami uh, Marlins when they played at Joe Robbie Stadium and they would have those huge like canopies over the seats in left field? I think you're going to see a lot of that. Right. Uh, I mean, if you want to make money, why would you not? Yeah. You tell the people that you, you sponsored or sold to, hey, nobody's going to be sitting in this section. Give us, you know, 20 grand and we'll put, we'll put the biggest, you know, tarp you've ever seen with your company's name <laughs> on it. Yeah, I think you're going to see a lot of that. <laughs> well, I mean, there, at least for the start, like the ratings are going to be phenomenal, right? Like this is going to be one of the highest rated regular season games that you guys have ever had, right? And, I mean, that's what we expect. What, yeah, yeah. You know what that really means is is open for debate, right? But like, I mean, people want baseball. Like, I want Friday night to. I mean, I'm tired of seeing you, so I want to listen to Tom Hamilton <laughs> Friday night. Like, I'm genuinely pumped for that. Hmm. Remind me, I have a story I cannot tell on this podcast. But I got to <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm with you, but I cannot say it on the podcast. I just, people get in trouble. Well, I can't. Um, but I have, 
<laughs> but I absolutely have to tell you, so much so that when we get done with this podcast, we will hang up and I will call your cell phone and tell you the story. Um, <laughs> Just to make sure good. the microphone's shut, shut down so <laughs> yeah. we don't go Tony Cruz. <laughs> yeah. No midget talk here, people. Uh, we always talk about the Giants. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, we expect it to be the most watched game ever. Here's the question I have out in Portage Lake. And, man, I've been at my, 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 my neighbor's pool for days on end. I got a good chance. Uh, it's weird to go to work. Um, in all honesty, with all the odd stuff of 2020, what is 7 o'clock on Portage Lake going to be like Friday night at the bars and everywhere else? Packed. Um, Great. You, you for better or worse. To, you can't pay me worse. to go near that lake on a weekend right now. It's yeah, too- I hear you. The places are too crowded. The lake's too crowded. Um, half the people don't know the rules. Um, right. Half the people don't follow them. Um, <laughs> the cops don't know who to pull over, so you don't want it to be you. Right? Right. Um, right. <laughs> Good point. I, I'm not interested. Like, like Dano's right across from me, Dre. They have uh-huh. done a wonderful job since day one of following the guidelines. Right. And I, I've only, I, I've been very little. Um, I have not been inside except when I needed to use the facility. But the small handful of times that I've been there, they have been absolutely on it in terms of where the table's got to be, what the rules are to get you seated, who, who who can be around, who can't be around, clear the runways to not have groups of this, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Other places, I'm not sure so much. Um, you already out there had some people that, just had boats for whatever reason and what happens is there are some rules there because it's state park water um sometimes i think the locals are a little bit like you should know the rules idiot rather than here are the rules they're only marked in a couple of places um like i said you you add the thought of alcohol and cabin fever and stuff like that and man i am i am more than content at home much 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 of the time but yes like Whatever it is that I'm doing Friday night, and I don't have any idea because I'm kind of like constantly on call waiting for the NFL to break something, right? Right. Um, I would hope that I would be in the backyard or in the driveway or wherever that may be with Tom Hamilton on the radio, a claw in my hand, and a big smile on this poorly aging face. Uh, sounds wonderful. I, I'm with you. Saturday night was weird because we didn't do the game. Um and I watched the Indians game sitting in my, you know, in my backyard and had a, you know, had my favorite beverages and had a cigar and had a great time. And I was like, man, that's pretty good. Mm-hmm. And then my uh, wife reminded me that that was probably the only time this year I was going to be able to do that. Yeah. Um, I, I, yeah. I'm like, the excitement of it is awesome. But I do, look, I want football to get here. I want us to play 60 baseball games. Right. Um, I want, I want to be able to have some normalcy. But I mentioned that question to you because I also get the feeling of, look, it's not going to be opening day like it was going to be on March 26th or like it's been in April 1st or whatever else we've done it. Um, these are moments that we are used to as people um, of gathering together, of, of, of enjoying together, of being in big crowds together. Um, I, You like I. I have friends that, you know, we've, we've participated and helped plenty of bar um, to be able to stay open for longer than it should or be open <laughs> a couple of years longer. I just, I, I feel bad for those guys because I feel like they're going to be putting the pickle of pickles starting this weekend. There will be games on TV starting Friday, Thursday night um, that matter, that count, that we're all used to. I mean, how many nights in our 20s, if we had nothing better to do, that we just went to, we went to the Valley or we went somewhere and watched two baseball yeah. games that didn't mean Diddly, you know what, to either of us, but it was an entertainment that got us. Come, you know, you know what our natural our natural movements are: sure. game on TV, girlfriend, wife, not bothering us. Maybe you got both. You get away from both. You go to a local pub. <laughs> you have a couple, and you make up a bunch of lies. And you make up a couple bets. That's our natural movement, yeah. and <laughs> I feel bad for bars because. With with what the rules are and what's out there, it's going to be hard to stay between the lines. Yeah, and listen, I support anybody's personal choice too. You know, totally stay home, do it, do it right. Um, right. This is just it's strange, and 
you know, you can question yourself no matter what you're doing, right? Like, sometimes I kind of feel like, wait, it's been 20 minutes since I washed my hands. What am I doing? You know? Yeah. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Um, yeah, like. I think it's natural to get, it's natural to get inside your own head. Yeah. We have no, like, we've got, we've, got, we've been given no true answers in four months. That's yeah. Like, well, like, and it, like, like, and we went, like, you, meant, you just ahead. mentioned it, though. Like, riding the wave of emotion and somewhat normal routine, like, that's when I would go to the bar. Like, especially in the late spring. Like, okay, well, NBA playoff game's on at 8. Let, let's go. Right? Right. Like, that's right. what we do. Um, right. And there, there, there hasn't been that. Like, I have, I have watched a little, a tiny bit of English Premier League and MLS, a tiny, tiny bit, like, I had NASCAR on the radio yesterday because it was better than the same songs I've been listening to on the radio. <laughs> you know? I, lo- I, I like NASCAR, and I'll admit that I've listened to NASCAR before on the radio. It's a hard listen, bro. <laughs> See, <laughs> it, well, it, it's a hard listen over an amount of time, but I guarantee when you turn it on and you feel the energy from those guys. Like, it's lap 12. Yeah. And there's a guy in 10th place moving to 9th place, and they throw it down to, to Joe Don Joe Schmo, and he is screaming and yelling like it's they just yeah. turn for home in the Daytona 500. <laughs> yes, you're right. You're right. There is a different – if you haven't listened to a NASCAR race on the radio, try it out because Zach is absolutely right. You need to wake up, turn on Billy Joe Bob, going, they're coming around line three, and he, goes, he just pushed past him. Well, we go in the third place. We got 180 more laps to go. <laughs> Yes. Yes. So those guys bring it. Those guys bring it, and and I appreciate it. Um, I have listened to very little soccer on the radio during the day, but I remember a long time ago, Jimmy Donovan telling me, he'll probably tell him both of us, that he listens to English Premier League not only because he's a fan, but he felt like that those guys have such a tough job trying to describe soccer on the radio that he could – Oh, no doubt. That it, it would help him. Make sure you're, you he's doing his job the best possible when he's on the radio. Uh, well, that's why, yeah, that's why Jimmy D is Jimmy D mm-hmm. because only because he listens to every every type of play by play, and he and he learns from it. And, I, and it was a beautiful lesson that I've learned to be completely honest. I mean, my dad told me the same thing when I first got into radio too. He's like, "Hey, don't just listen to radio stations you like. Go listen to country music. See how they get in and out of breaks." Mm-hmm. And I remember I laughed at my dad, and when I heard Jimmy Donovan basically said the same thing, I was like, "Well." Must be something to this, and right. they're both right. Right. No, it, you know what? It's funny you say that, too, and if any young, aspiring broadcasters are listening. Like, when I first started doing this, that's what I learned, is it's way less about you being the star and you being the standout, especially when you get started, as it is. is if you just get in and out of breaks, producers are going to fight mm-hmm. for you to get a gig. Right? Yep. <laughs> yep. yep. You're Real just fun. on time, and look at the camera. And say what you're supposed to say without messing it up, like it's gonna go well, right? They don't care. I hate saying it. They barely. And I, I don't want to say they don't care about your content. They don't care about your content if you don't get to the breaks one time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Right. <laughs> I've had I've had guys make like radio tapes and they're like, man, in the 20th minute I did this, and I'm like instantly I'm like, they're, if they get to 20 minutes, they're already gonna hire you. You got to get them to listen for the first three minutes, <laughs> like the first minute and a half. Is what yeah. You need to get. Well, you know, it, it, that's kind of how things have changed. Like, okay, I, I I've made very clear, long time listeners of the pod know, like we've told the tire changing story, all this. Like, I don't know anything about cars except for putting gas in it, <laughs> right? And if I feel something yeah. wrong, it's immediately one eight hundred call reg because I don't know, right? right. But like right. from watching NASCAR. And from occasionally having it on the radio and following it on Twitter, I feel like I've learned a lot about the sport. I I do. So, and Good. I think like everything has changed. Like there's always going to be traditional TV and a traditional like a radio game broadcast, regardless if you're listening on your phone or through some app or whatever. But like podcasting is a new frontier because yeah, we do our ad reads, we talk, but if we want to do this, we're at 19 minutes and 33 seconds right now, right? Like. If we want to do this for five more minutes or five more hours, we can go, right? We want to do the second American Fireworks talk. We can do it right now. Go visit them in Hudson. We can do it at the end. Whereas <laughs> when, when you're doing this traditional stuff, like, there's this big format to follow. And I think that's kind of where we are across sports media. Now, I'm not talking about COVID and, and so much is at stake. And, you know, I think 
in a podcast or two, we will let's talk about what's at stake for the future of college sports and how things might forever change here. But yeah. like, for how this is packaged with athletes with their IG accounts and all this, like we love LeBron being real. You know, anybody that knows right. anything about LeBron can tell when he writes his own tweets and when he doesn't. Right. And like today, one of an employee of LeBron's put out something about, well, they said it'd be so much harder in the West than the East. Well, the truth is LeBron is yet to even play in a Western Conference playoff game. So let's not, right, let's, right. you know, like, so th- this is re- in like the NFL players yesterday. This is an ex- what, what they call business an accidentally good transition here. It was clear that at Great a certain trip. time, the top players started tweeting and over the next hour and then into the hours, yep. they all went. that was coordinated. Where is this headed? When does this get resolved? I think it gets resolved first. Um, my read on it is it's going to take on a similar shape to the baseball negotiations of three, four weeks ago where it's going to get publicly ugly, where both teams are going to try or both sides are going to try to use Twitter, try to use certain reporters, try to use leverage in the public. And then eventually, even though we should be able to sit here and say, Dre, that it's okay to solve the safety and the testing issues first and worry about the money later, we know that the truth is it, nothing is probably going to get signed off upon until the money issues are resolved. Yeah. Um, I was going to talk baseball. I was going to say, in this podcast, and, I, and it's fine how you went about it, um, it's crazy because, and I don't need to do the told you so, I'm trying to be a better person. I really am. Um, I well, just it's just in the way that we do that I do shit. We do shit. Um, I think that uh, I'll pat us on the back because I appreciate who we are and what we are and what we've stood for and not stood for, uh, and how we podcast, how um, we haven't just thrown pot shots at different people. I used to be really, I used to, I used to do too much of that, and I, that doesn't mean don't stop listening to this podcast because I might take one at grocery at any second, um, because <laughs> he deserves it, um. I just, this whole football, baseball thing, I was going to say early on, like, you know, we always joke that, you know, you only got to, what was it, the 30 seconds of baseball talk on the podcast? And it was like our, you know, it was the running joke of the podcast because uh, we always we always knew what, what feeds the bills and what people want. Baseball is a great sport, and baseball has to find its way to tell its story better because it, 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 the players and the true fans of baseball need to find a way to get more fans in. Um, I think Zach's telling great stories right now about how, because of COVID, because of what the, our new normals have become, we're both paying attention to NASCAR more than ever before. Mm-hmm. I, well, I'm, I'm paying attention as, mu- as much as I always have, but I'm paying, I'll give this, I've paid attention to soccer more than I ever have in my whole life. And it's made for a happy home because obviously my wife played in college uh, and I've always just kind of pushed it to the side. And it was nothing funnier than her a couple Saturday mornings ago or Friday mornings, whatever it was. She comes from, you know, working out in the basement or whatever and her son and i are sitting on our you know couch and it was like a and we're watching soccer and we're into it aj and i are watching the soccer game because well what the hell else am i gonna do right and i know my son likes it and i know my wife likes it my daughter can care less which makes me love her even more um, <laughs> um and she can be really good at soccer and wants nothing to do with it and that makes her mom go crazy that just shows you my daughter's my favorite um that story because <laughs> she's got a lot of me in her but my point to all of what I'm saying is I was going to say in the beginning of this podcast that we could do fun, happy baseballs back, or we could do, oh, shit, here we go again with football, which is our favorite our favorite thing, all of our favorite things. Yeah. That's nothing against any other sport. Um, as those texts went down yesterday uh, from each player, I mean, you know what I've said. I try, I've i told you, and I gotta, it's not a pat, pat myself in the back thing. Until J.C. Treader says we're going to have football, I don't believe we're having football. I've said that to you for about two months now, right? Yep. We're going to have football. I believe that. But I will say, Zach, in a weird way, I don't know. And you and I talked a little bit before we even had this. We started this podcast. I don't even know how anyone is going to feel. No one's going to feel completely safe. There is going to be risk-reward. And Lord knows, there are people out there that work in hospitals, sanitation, uh, restaurants, we can go down the line that have put their bodies on the line, put their, you know, put their families on the line for way less than any athlete will. So I'm not belittling that. Um, but I don't know exactly how you make J.C. Treader feel 100% comfortable with playing football in two months. 
his story of play, you know, having, you know, a, if you're in a huddle on Friday and you find out you got it on Saturday, does that mean the whole offense is out on Sunday? Yeah. Um, these are valid questions, and these are what they're going through, which is why the players are insisting on certain things um, before they're willing to come back. So, um, you know, these you are all legitimate money. questions. I do expect right. the you NFL brought... to figure it out. But here's part of what you just said. They don't want to just come back with the 21-day acclimation period. They want to see a plan to get everybody through the season, to start and finish right. the season, Right. Um, my read on it, and this is just mine from where I sit, I think the NFL is going to be the only football we have this fall. I would love to be wrong about that. Yeah. But, Drea, like what you said is like all the guidelines in the world with the locker rooms and how we sit on the buses and who we play is fine. But this is still a game where J.C. Treader touches or is touched by seven guys yep. on a given play. Right? Yep, yep, um, yep. yep. And J.C. Treader is very well-kept 300 pounds. <laughs> Been talking for weeks about guys who are bigger than that, who are at, yep. who already put their bodies through absolute hell, who are at extreme high risk. And that, to me, is part of the thing with training camp and, and the testing and the lack of certainty, really, in any area. Is these guys go through absolute hell in two and a half hour practices in ninety five degrees in August, strung together often five days in a row, right? Yep. So, yep. COVID or no COVID, or or being able to get a read on what guys have or what they haven't, it's going to be very difficult. So I like, yeah. I and again like as we record this, the owners were meeting. For what we like, as like I mentioned, I expect that to be a counter proposal, and I expect the negotiations to go on, right? But like acclimation period or no acclimation period, uh, outside the true bubble concept, which clearly they haven't gone for, right? It, I, I you know, it, n- nothing is certain. I, I I don't know no. how else to say it. I, I agree with you. Yeah, and I want it, and we want it bad, and it, yeah, and look. Even with baseball, I'm excited right now. I'm getting, I'm, I'm, I, you know, I, I'll be, I, I just want to say this the right way. I have a nervous approach of I'm driving the same drive. I've done this podcast, driving to the ballpark with Zach and for you guys many a times over the last five years. And usually it's one of the most giddy times of my life. And I'm giddy right now. And I told before we started this, I said to my wife, she was like, you seem nervous. And I was like, I'm more nervous about making sure I'm taking care of all the shit that I've never worried about in the past. Like, I haven't even, like, like I did stuff for the game. And, like, I'm not even worried about my job. Usually I'm worried about, okay, in the pregame I need to hit this. I need to talk to this player about this. Uh, I want to make sure I'm prepared. I talk to tomorrow's starter about this. Um, I want to make sure when I do do this in the open of the game that I say this the right way. So maybe I'll write out the beginning so I get to this. So I get to this quote just the right way. Like those are my usual hurdles or concerns in my mind. Right now, Zach, mine are make sure I park in the right place. Make sure I get my, my bring two masks. Make sure I have food to eat and I bring a couple water bottles so I don't like I'm concerned about things I've never been concerned about about being at the ballpark mm-hmm. that have nothing to do with my job but have everything to do with my job. Mm-hmm. Um, now, you know, is my temperature gonna be okay? Like I didn't cut the grass in the heat today because I didn't want to show up and have a high temperature. I've never worried about that in my whole life. And, like, I know that probably won't happen, but suddenly you do worry about that shit because if your temperature's too high, you get sent back and you don't get paid for today. Yeah. <laughs> no, well, I Go mean, ahead. listen, we're, we're, we're not there yet, but assuming NFL camp's open next week, um, those of us who are allowed in on certain days, we're going to get tested every single day. And we still won't be near the players. Right? Right. Um, you know, that's how it's going to go. Like, I, you know, I personally – am fine with down the road, you know, going to games and doing, but I, I don't know how it's going to work. And, and listen, it's going to affect coverage. Like mm-hmm. there's not going to be a post game locker room guys. Where's the good shit come from the post game locker room <laughs> because Absolutely. guys have just put their lives on the line and you get some raw, real emotion after that win or lose. Yeah, you get, would I, would I get Pac-Man telling you they trash? Yes. Trash I mean, that, <laughs> one of my all time stories, the year the Browns went on 16, the second or third game of the year. 
I went. Yep. They played the Bengals. I went to the Bengals locker room. I waited for Pac-Man Jones, the thinker that he is, and I said something to the effect of, "You know, Hugh, you know, you've been playing in this division for a long time, Pac. Like, what is what is your impression of the Browns and and what they're trying to do?" And he looked at me dead in the eye and said, "Did you see those receivers? They're not going to win a game." <laughs> You know, last year, Jermaine Whitehead did what he did. And it was all over the internet before I got to the locker room, which I didn't know. Luckily, right. luckily, I did know. And I walked in the locker room, and no one else knew. And there was Jermaine Whitehead still with his shoulder pads and cleats on, <laughs> tweeting no death threats to Dustin Fox. Yes. <laughs> Tweets from his cleats. Remember that uh, shit? <laughs> yeah. What do you say, Ben Red or something red? Uh, yeah, so, so this year, maybe he doesn't get cut the next day. Right, right. I don't know. The way he was that way, well, that dumbass was sweet. Yeah, I mean, there there was a lot more going on there, right? Um, right on right. blood. <laughs> but, <laughs> that's what it was. That's what it was. Uh, but like, right. yeah, We're so not like, it's it, even for me. It's gonna be different. It's 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 gonna yeah. be different. And that, that listen that that's not what was me. That's not what was us. I mean, I, obviously, I have no. vested interest in there being football because I cover football for a living. I work for a company that, without sports, already had to make major cuts on multiple fronts. Some you guys know about, some you don't. And we're not the only ones. A lot of people that we know have taken furloughs, have taken pay cuts. Their jobs are in grave danger if, if NFL doesn't get started, right? Um, for sure. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see how this goes. But, you know, we, we talk about we know money's going to come up. I mean – you know the the ballpark figure is forty million has to be cut. So is that this year's cap and next year's cap? Do they spread it over six right. years? And when you're the Browns and you just signed Miles, which we haven't got to, and I'm fine with it, we can get to right. that if or, or not. But you look at if you do have a good year and who you do have to sign and who you already have under contract. If twenty percent comes off that cap, all of a sudden for the first yeah. time in twenty years, you got cap problems. So you got you know, yeah out of nowhere after they've saved all that money for all that time. That's what could happen. But it's not just them, though. It's going to be the whole league if it's just yes. you know, if that comes to about. No, like, this is this is the future of sports, right? Like, right. It's, it's flashed before our eyes. And so whether you're a casual fan and we listen, you listen to this podcast and, you know, watch two games a week, we appreciate the hell out of you. Whether you're diehard hardcore, invested in the team as a season ticket holder or whatever, diehard fantasy player, like, or if you're in the sports business, like, there's very little certainty. Right? Like, you're, right. you're talking about as a relatively healthy, you know, 41-year-old guy who talks too much. Like, you got concerns about going <laughs> to the park. I think Terry Francona has more concerns than you do, not to put words in his mouth. Right? Like, For sure he does. Yeah. He does. So, this is – and the players, like, this is just a real, real, real uncertain time. And I'm hoping like hell that everybody stays healthy and that things go well for baseball – and for uh, basketball and, you know, down in Orlando and MLS when a couple teams had to get kicked out, you know, I hope it straightens out and that they can kind of show the way for the NFL. Uh, I think right now a fair view on the NFL is they had time on their side all along. And now they don't, and they are faced with the realities of there's a lot of money at stake. Um, they're, they're, we need to be back to work and we're, we're on somewhat of a timeline because if the NFL ends up being delayed a few weeks, that'll be fine. Right. Especially Dre, because no big deal, no fans and stands and and things like that. Right. No big deal. But like things go wrong here and things go sideways or they get started and they try to cut corners. And as you mentioned, all of a sudden Deshaun Watson and Pat Mahomes can't play in that opener seven weeks from now. Now, now we got real issues. Right. And see, that's, and see, I think that's the one thing I give the NFL, like, I don't want to bash. I'm sick of doing that at this point in time. Um, yeah, the NFL's had a long time. And yes, we both agreed. And I know Pete and Painesville agreed. We loved how aggressive the NFL was. And we're going to be ready. We're going to do our thing. You know, we had the draft. We had this. Unfortunately, not much has changed information wise for us about this virus. Um, there's been way, I mean, if you go to Facebook, you can learn a whole lot from a lot of very smart people. Just ask them, but nobody really truly knows, um, the true effect. And I, and I don't, and there's a comment I would, I would say, but I'm not going to, cause I don't want to be like the Facebook people or the people that think they know it all, even though they only went to Barbara in high school. I'm only using that cause that gets, um, but I give the NFL credit because how could you prepare? How can you prepare for this? I mean, MLB is back, and they're still going through trials and tribulations with, with testing and how to test and 
how to get the test, and they, they need another company to take the test then because they're testing guys every other day, which is great. But how do you get the test back in time? How do you – should teams practice without knowing? Um, you know, what happens when – why? you know, if your wife is pregnant, you want to be – like, there are so many other variables that none of us know how to answer. And with football, having so many guys – here's – all right, here's one for you, and then we can talk about Miles Garrett, and then I'm at the roll. Um, the one thing baseball has going for it, the caveat that makes them think that they can – that this will work, Zach, um, even if all hell breaks loose. And all hell breaks loose, breaking loose – means seven guys come in tomorrow and they all test for positive, right? And they're like the bullpen guys and they've all been together. Whatever. Or every guy that was on one of the buses coming back to Pittsburgh got it. That's a holy shit moment, right? I think for all of us, we go, oh, shit. If you hear that on – if you hear Aaron Goldhammer say that, and I'm only saying that because I know Goldhammer listens and he uses half of what we say on the show, so I'm going to just give you a shout-out. Um, but if you hear Goldhammer say, you know, at 9 a.m. On, on, on K&R, you know, Friday morning, if they're up, oh, eight Indians with – and I'm just using this as an example, um, have COVID. We would all go, oh, shit, here comes the end. Well, the thing that baseball has done so far has set up to have, you know, have a whole whole another team out in East Lake. So if six guys were to get it, they can put six guys in quarantine, three or four that were near them in quarantine, and they can bring 10 baseball players up immediately to fill those spots. Now, are they as good as they that they'll be replacing? Absolutely not. But you would have the ability – to still put a baseball team on the field, right? In mm-hmm. football, have they discussed having? I mean, you can't have ninety guys. Well, all one year of the long. one of the you'll have 90, 90 guys in camp unless they decide to cut it. But one of the proposals right. is to have up to sixteen guys on the practice squad, so that way every week you okay. are prepared if that happens, right? If on Saturday night the offensive line room tests positive, now the product will suffer, the league will suffer, the team will no suffer. Doubt. No doubt. And we know in Cleveland, coaches get fired every year. <laughs> you know, they always have their own hand in it to an extent, but a lot of shit happens that's out of their control, right? But right, I right. Mean, the normal practice squad is 10 guys, and there's a procedure for bringing them up, and then you're exposed to the waiver wire, and there becomes a whole new strategy and a whole new deal because you can partially guarantee some, some contracts of some undrafted rookies. You can pay certain guys more to stay on your practice squad, and they think you're in your plans. But there, there is a proposal – and again, everything is still in the proposal stages, at least as of this morning, to where basically a right. kind of a taxi squad would be established. But do you want Garrett Gil? You know, who wins if Garrett Gilbert has to quarterback the Browns against anybody, let alone against the Ravens or the Steelers? Right? The TV people that put a product on the on the. Your, I get what you're saying. I agree yeah. wholeheartedly. But the well, TV people and that everybody yeah. wants to get paid. Let, let, let me sum it up by saying this, Drake, because because I've thought about this and. I've worried about this. I've had conversations about this with people over the course of Friday and Saturday. um, I sent the same text. So it was, um, this was to high school coaches, college coaches, head and assistant, and a couple of NFL type people. I didn't, you know, change the wording for any of them. I just said, Hey, just curious your thoughts a hundred miles off the record. You know, what, what do you think? Where are we? What do you, you know, something like that. I could go back and get the exact wording, but that's pretty close to, right. you know, and of the five or six or seven that responded, I got four or five clearly different answers and two or three that differed in some ways. So wow. I don't know makes for bad radio <laughs> podcasts <laughs> and it makes for uneasy times, but like they don't, right? They don't. And How could they? That that's the thing, and it's like, even if you sit here and make a strong case for we can play high school football or we can play college football, there is that unknown. And if you sit there and make the case for why are we even trying, given the size of these guys and the limit and how we know how this virus is transmit transmitted, you know, like I get how in the middle there's not just gray area, but it's super gray and cloudy, and it sucks. So. It's July twentieth. Like we're supposed to know these things, and we and we don't. And yeah, it's it's uncertain. Unfortunately, we don't. <clears throat> yeah, and we got your birthday month coming up next month, and uh, usually that's uh, usually that's when we know it's time to, to stop drinking all the the beer and get ready for the season. And I think it'll be just the opposite. Usually, the greatest part. month of the year, no <laughs> doubt about it. But you, it it has a chance to be still. Yeah, this year in a whole different way that we've never seen before. I mean, all right, I'm gonna. I'm gonna 
I want to ask you about Miles Garrett, but I'm going to say this. If we can get shit right and we can all, you know, pray to whatever you do, think about what three, four weeks could be if we could get this, everything right. And we may, it won't be perfect, but we could have baseball going every single day, every single night. We could have NBA games going, walking us towards the playoffs, going every single night. We could have NFL camps going on. And by the way, we don't, in my opinion, we don't need any preseason games. I'm worried about injuries. I've said that to you, and I'll continue saying that to you. Um, not having camps, not having those things. I just see blown Achilles, um, and that would suck too for the league. Mm-hmm. So I think that is a good – because they haven't had any camps. They haven't done anything. You can't just strap one pads on the 280-pound monsters and think that, that ligaments and bones won't be broken, pulled, and stretched. That's a whole other thing because I want to be positive. We literally could in three weeks, four weeks, and by the time your birthday comes, it will be like no year like we've ever had, which we already know, but we could have baseball, basketball, and football weeks away from happening. Maybe not college, maybe not high school, but maybe we do have a Browns game against the Bengals you know, by mid-September uh, on a Thursday night with no fans or maybe with 20,000 inside the stadium. Right. I still believe, I still believe whether it's, you know, and, I, and it's not 100% believing it, Zach, but the, in, in the heart of my heart, if we can get this thing going on Friday with baseball, which I think, knock on wood, we're going on. Um, and an NBA can get off uh, the bubble um, in a couple of weeks and start their games. Maybe you write a book in 10 years about the craziest August of all time. <laughs> I, it's still possible. It's it, still possible. It I'm is. Not hold my breath. And listen, that's all you can do is is just just be hopeful that it goes well, right? And, and we'll see. A uh, lot of energy spent on those Facebook and Twitter streets arguing things. Where, where, where there's still even things we think we know about, we don't really know. Right. So. Right. Right. Um, All right. I here's my, like, t- here's I my like take on Miles Garrett. And I even hate to use okay. that word, but uh, I believe the Browns did the right, did absolutely did the right thing. You get it done. You get it out of the way. You know, you're going to do it. Um, he did have, you know, the incident and he, that is going to follow him. And I'm going to be super interested to see a, how he's officiated and B who goes after his niece when football begins. But you have a guy that otherwise has been exemplary in and out of the building. He is a freak of freak of freaks in the 1%. He's 24 years old. And if you get in the business of paying guys for what they already did in the league, you're in trouble. You got to pay them for what you think they might be. And if Miles Garrett blossoms into what the Browns believe he can be, and they clearly do, then you'll end up getting a discount on that. So I think it was smart to do it now, especially as you look at, you know, some uncertainty with the camp. Um, and, and some other things, and we will find out. But like I said, you can nitpick and you can wonder like you can with every other decision that's made in the sports business. But I don't think any further than that. I think you can say the Browns did the right thing there, and people that are arguing it are either from Pittsburgh, for one, or just looking to fill hours on their show. We'll see how it turns out. But I think let the me, Browns did the right this. thing. Let me get I, – I think the Browns got a steal. I do. I've heard people – I've heard people – I heard it today. Why would they sign it already? Why, why wouldn't they wait? Dude, you got an up-and-coming, rising, one of the best defensive ends in all of football. And he could have waited and made a lot more money um, to me. And like you just said about the, about the cap and everything else, um, he, they, they got a steal, in my opinion. And I know everybody won't agree with me. I think it's the greatest. And it's bigger than just playing defensive end for the Cleveland Browns. It's, we drafted him. We've cultivated him. He's become one of the best. And we've kept him. They haven't signed a first-round pick that they drafted since what Joe Hayden, maybe. Um, give, if even if I'm wrong, I'm, it's not many more other than him that they've drafted and actually signed to a second contract. To me, this is bigger than all of that. Number two, I gotta say this, um, and I understand we're in the take business, right? You just said you hate using that word. I hate using that word. I hate that people keep asking about the the, the incident happened. I don't know what the fuck that quarterback said. You don't know who the, what the hell that quarterback said. It was one incident. Everything else in Miles, and I know he's got some some penalties. How, what defensive end that hits quarterbacks for a living isn't getting late hit penalties or getting roughing the passer penalties in 2019 and 2020? That is the game. Hearing people call him a dirty player and things of that nature drives me insane because when I think of a dirty player, I think of guys, hell, I didn't even think James Harrison was a dirty player all the time. But I can understand why people thought he was a dirty player. Who's the linebacker in Cincinnati and then went to Oakland? Perfect. That dude's a dirty player. Yeah. Perfect is a dirty player. Miles Garrett plays hard, as strong as an ox. 
And sometimes when he hits people, their helmets are going to pop off and they're going to break their ankles. I just think that overall, if you really paid attention to who he is, and I'm not some huge Miles Garrett friend, I'm not, I'm not doing that. I just think his character and how he plays, who he is, how he was raised, states the Browns made an awesome move. And I think they're getting a deal for what that kid is going to be worth in two or three years if he stays healthy. Yes, will referees watch him closer? And, and will people, like you said, in the, in the job of doing that, pay attention to how he reacts the first time he's cut and hit high and hit low? Or the first time he gets hit with a penalty that's kind of questionable? Sure, it's our job. But I would say if you rank and you know who he is off of what he's done since he's gotten into the NFL, um, I'm not worried about his character and all those other things. I don't judge him on that one Thursday night uh, in Cleveland that, that he lost his mind for a couple seconds. That's just me. You know how it becomes a deal, Dre? He's got to dominate. Good is not close yep. to good enough. We we got to see a new dimension for Miles Garrett. We, well, we got... the night, hey, the night, the night he got thrown out of the game, he was dominating. Yeah. Well, he's got to do and, that. And their run, yeah, and his, and their run defense and their defense period after he had to, couldn't play anymore last season, he was dominant. Yeah, because that defense wasn't close to the same without him. So I well, I agree with you. But yeah. if you look at the numbers and look how that team played, they were not the same without him. That says dominance to me. Well, Mason Rudolph is close to going pro in something other than sports. But you're right; he did he did dominate. That, that <laughs> hey, Mason Rudolph wasn't asked to block him. He was going against the real blockers. Now. <laughs> I mean, Mason Rudolph stinks. I, 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 I know bad quarterbacking, right? I have a fucking PhD <laughs> in bad know. quarterbacking. If there's, yeah, if there's anything we stinks. know. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. Without uh, Miles Garrett, they lost to the Duck, right? The right, duck right, just... right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you gotta go. I gotta go. Too. Shouts to scene to the honeymoon girl to American fireworks. Thanks, you guys, for listening. Uh, hopefully, sports are back. We'll be back at some point too. Uh, for Andre, I'm Zach. We'll talk to you soon on A to Z. I'll call you in uh, two seconds.